Now give me two seconds, let me just deploy the app and yep, we are up and running. So if you watched my recent videos about Proxmox, about TrueNAS, I mentioned a couple of times that I'll be doing a more in-depth video about Docker and this is exactly what this video is about. I wanna show you how easy it is to use TrueNAS to deploy multiple Docker containers and how to kind of set up something called persistent volumes so your data gets stored if your Docker container dies. But then I wanna dive a little bit deeper and I wanna set up something called an LXC container so if you don't want to use TrueNAS, but you want to play around with, say, Debian or Arch Linux, and you want to learn how to do Docker containers, I also want to go over that. And then I want to step it up a little bit more and kind of make it easier by installing something called Portainer. And that is a nice graphical user interface. And we'll be playing around with something called Docker Compose Files. I'm going to show you how to use Portainer with Docker Compose Files. Now, ever since the release of TrueNAS 2504, I've been a massive fan of running TrueNAS, and it's actually become my daily driver. I used to do Proxmox. I absolutely love Proxmox, it's still brilliant, but the features that TrueNAS offers, everything in one, it just makes it so much easier. And to me, it's just the perfect all-in-one solution. But anyway, enough talking, let's turn our attention to the PC. And now is the time to show you how easy it is with TrueNAS to deploy apps. Now I've already got a couple of them running, Open Web UI and Uptime Kuma, but I wanna show you my favorite app, which is Tailscale. It's an incredible VPN, and I will be doing a dedicated video next week where we'll be talking about cloud Cloudflare and how we can expose our services such as Open Web UI, which is AI, on the internet and we can have a full domain name. And also we're going to be going over VPN and how you can connect multiple computers and run your own VPN. So don't forget to subscribe to see how easy it really is to do all of that. But let's deploy Tailscale. And this is how easy it is. You literally on the left hand side, click on apps and then you're going to click discover apps. And here you can see all the apps that are available. And at the top, we have a search bar. And here I'm going to type in Tailscale and then I'm going to click install and I wanted to show you a couple of different options that you have here in Tailscale when it comes to deploying the container because as I mentioned earlier you can have something called persistent storage so the data never disappears and it gets backed up onto your NAS or you can have it be within kind of just a docker container so if you kill the docker container or delete it the data also gets deleted. Now at the top you can name the container to anything you want I'm just going to call it Tailscale demo. Now version usually you want to use the latest version and then the host name you can call it TrueNAS scale whatever is already pre-filled that's usually enough for me now under auth key this is a key that you need to get from your tail scale account and don't worry about this for now and um, this is slightly relevant but i will be showing you this exactly next week now the settings further down they are specific to tail scale so you can auth once accept dns and all this sort of stuff advertise exit note we're not going to concern ourselves too much with this the one thing i wanted to show you is when we scroll down further where we have a storage configuration here now here you have two options the data set is created within the volume itself so essentially within the docker container that you run or if you create a host path you can store that data on a separate section of the hard drive so in my case i can go into the mount youtube demo docker and here i can create one called tail scale like so i'm going to click create so that's now created the tail scale container on my nas now this won't be visible but it will still be backed up so next time i install tail scale for whatever reason if i was to delete this i can point it back to this container and back to this storage location and what it will do is it'll get those features back so anything that i've already pre-configured it will be back because it is on that persistent volume now further down i can do additional storage don't really need anything but right at the bottom we have cpu limit limitations so how many cpu cores do you want to give it and this just means up to how many it has so instead of saying it's going to get allocated to it has the, the kind of the ability to scale up to two cpu cores and then underneath we're going to give it ram and i don't really need to give it up to two gig of ram but i will give it anyway and then i click install now I'm just gonna give it a few seconds and wait for it to deploy. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna pull the image down, the tail scale image down, and then it's gonna show me in my applications that it's up and running. And if we take a look here, it is already up and running and tail scale is ready. And then if we take a look in my tail scale account, here it is, TrueNAS scale dash one, because I've already got a, another instance of TrueNAS running. But this is essentially the IP address and I'd be able to SSH into this. But as I said, we are gonna focus on this next week. 
But let me show you another super cool container that I think everybody should be running, and that is an ad protection or an ad guard on your system. And TrueNAS has ad guard already on there. They also have Pi-hole. So if you're more interested in Pi-hole, if you've seen that, for example, on Linus Tech Tips, you can run Pi-hole as well. But I'm a big fan of ad guard. It's personal preference, but this is how I will set up my ad guard container. Again, same process as before. Call it whatever, ad guard home, for example, and then demo. Now, deploying a container such as ad guard is a little bit different, especially when we need to access a web UI, whereas with Tailscale, we don't really need to do that. And here is where we can specify a port numbers. So I could give it a port of 3999, now on the DNS port, you wanna leave it on 53. Now, because I'm already running AdGuard, I'm gonna change it to 59, but don't worry too much about that. 53 would be just perfect for you. Just, if you do change it, remember what you've set it to. Now on the storage configuration, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave it on IX volume because I wanna store all the data internally because I will be deleting this later. But you now know how to kind of keep everything in the Docker container or how you're gonna store it on a separate drive, for example. So I'm gonna leave everything as is here. And again, under CPU limits, I'm gonna give it that. And I'm gonna give it one gig of RAM because that should be plenty. And I'm gonna hit install. And there we go, it's now up and running. And the difference is with something that has a web front end, such as AdGuard, I can click on it and then I'll get the option to click into the web UI. And it will take me to here and then I need to work my way through, set up an account and kind of just configure AdGuard. Now I can do a dedicated series on how to set up AdGuard, how to make sure your router points to it and you actually get ad protection. So if you wanna see that, please drop me a comment down below. I'm more than happy to do that because I think AdGuard is an absolutely brilliant piece of software. Now, a couple of other ones that I wanted to show you while I've got them up and running is Uptime Kuma. Uptime Kuma is a monitoring software or a monitoring container where here I can check whether my internet is up and if my internet goes down, I can have it send me notifications so I can be kind of in ahead of the game when my internet goes down so I know that it's gone down even when I'm not at home. I can also do the same with my router. So if my router shuts down for whatever reason, I can, for example, ring my partner if I'm not home and I can say, look, the router's gone down, it's here, here. Can you please try and turn it back on, for example, if she needs the internet and then I can obviously do the same with TrueNAS. Now next week what I want to show is how you can actually monitor devices that are not on your network but you can do that with the magic of Tailscale and Uptime Kuma. You could potentially have a server somewhere else in another country in another home somewhere and you can actually monitor it from your home network and it's absolutely brilliant and it is super simple to set up as well. So let's now step it up a little bit and actually install Docker. Now in my previous video on TrueNAS, I showed you how to install an LXC container. And essentially what I did is the exact same thing here. And I installed Arch Linux because I'm really comfortable with Arch Linux and I'm very familiar with Arch Linux. So I've gone ahead and installed that. And I also want to show you how easy it is to get Docker up and running if you, for example, don't want to be running something like TrueNAS. Now I'm not going to go through the whole setup, but basically I've created an Arch Linux LXC container, but you can do that by creating a new instance. And then you would obviously type in the information here under container you can select your image so in my case I would look for arch I would select arch now on the CPU and memory you can give it as many cores as few as you think you're gonna need for example you want to give it four CPU cores if you're gonna be running kind of a loads of docker containers or if you're just messing around and you don't have that much horsepower one's gonna be enough and one gig of RAM is gonna be enough so CPU and memory is fine storage here I wouldn't worry too much about that just yet under network if you're using TrueNAS you want to make sure you select both the Mac VLAN and the bridge NIC that way you're gonna get internet now at the bottom we have GPU devices and you could potentially pass through the Nvidia GPU if you run something like an OpenAI instance or something like that where basically you need the GPU horsepower and you actually have it available like a 4060, 70, 4090 even obviously 50 series GPUs and so on but for my case this is plenty and then you would just click create. So if we go back to our instances, you can see my Arch Linux LXC container is up and running. So you would go ahead and click on it. And then on the right hand side, you're going to see something called tools. And this essentially allows you to SSH into that LXC container. So here we are in the terminal. Now, because this is Arch, it is super simple to install Docker. You would literally just type in sudo pacman dash s and then you would type in docker and press enter and it would go ahead and install it for you now i've already done it for the sake of the speed of this video but you would essentially do this and you can see it's already installed so then once we've installed docker there's one more thing that we need to do and we need to enable it and start the service so we need to type in system ctl or system control enable 
Docker. We're going to press enter and it will create a symlink. I've already done it, but it would normally show you an output saying we've created a symlink. And then you want to do the same, but here you want to now type start Docker. So if I type that in, that means Docker is now running. A very, very simple test that you can do is called Docker run hello dash world. And this will essentially get a Docker container up and running that is purely for testing purposes. And if we take a look at the output, we can see hello from Docker. This message shows that the installation appears to be working correctly. So if you see this output, that means you have everything correctly configured. Now, let me show you how you can get a container up and running nice and easily. And this will obviously depend from container to container. There's going to be loads of kind of variables that you have to keep in mind. And this is why we are going to shortly focus on something called Portainer because it just makes it a little bit easier. It's a, it's a nicer kind of UI. So I've kind of gone into the official Uptime Kuma documentation here, and this is on the Docker website. At the bottom, you can see how to use Docker, and then it tells you to create a Docker volume. So this is essentially a storage section where all the data is going to be configured. I'm going to walk you through that short. But for now, I'm going to copy this command back to my Arch Linux, and I'm going to paste it. So the next thing we can do is if we take a look further down the bottom, it says docker run dash d restart always dash p 3001 and so on and so on and so on. This is essentially the command to run docker. And you can see that it's not kind of the most easy to understand or easy to read, especially if you're just starting out. But I just want to kind of walk you through some of this stuff. So if I clear my screen, I paste it in. So docker run kind of self-explanatory docker just run the container basically. Then restart always just means if the Docker container for whatever reason goes down, so if you had a power cut or whatever, you want it to get back up and running as soon as possible. And this is what restart always means. Dash P means the port. So essentially, when you go onto the IP address of your Docker container, you're also going to have to find a specific port. And think of a port as a bit of a set of flats or an apartment building. So each apartment building has the same address. So it'd be 123 Main Road, for example. And that is the apartment building. But each port is its own kind of flat inside that if we think about it like that. So in order for the postman to know where to kind of direct the mail, it needs to know what port or what house number it needs to go to. And in this case, you could have, for example, in this case, port 3001, or you could also have a port 1234. So you can have many, many ports open and many, many essentially flats within that building. Now, the next thing we can see is uptime dash Kuma, and that is the kind of volume that we have created. And inside of that, we're going to store the data. Then we look at the name. And this is essentially when we are going to run Docker PS, which I'll show you in a second. It's going to be called Uptime Kuma. You could call this whatever you want. Now, you don't have to put a name, but it will just create a kind of random set of characters for your Docker container. So naming it is just good practice. And then it tells you which Docker container you want it to download and where it's coming from. And if we go back to the Docker page, it is this thing here that it downloads. And that will then go ahead, download the image. And if you've got it up and running successfully, you can check that by typing Docker PS, and this will show you all the running Docker containers. And here, if we have a look, we can see we're running Louis Lamb forward slash Uptime Kuma 1. Now, how do I access this is the next question. Because if we take a look on the port, all we see is 0000, 000, 000 and then port 3001. If I was to type in 0 .0 .0 0.0.0.0 port 3001 in my web browser, it wouldn't bring me anywhere. And this is kind of what I wanted to show because it's a little bit confusing. But here, we need to do one more step, which is IPA. And don't worry about all these numbers. We're looking for the internal IP address and that IP address can be found here under ETH0. And here's the IP address 10.0.40.149. So I now need to replace this with 10.0.40.149, was it? And now, as you can see, I've typed that in 10.0.40.149 colon 3001 and here we are on the setup screen of Uptime Kuma. Then obviously you just go ahead and configure Uptime Kuma. Now if you want me to do a dedicated video on kind of monitoring such as net data, Uptime Kuma, anything like that, let me know. Drop me a comment down below the like button. Now the next thing I want to show you is I want to show you how you can get Portainer set up because Portainer is a really nice and easy to use interface for managing your Docker containers. Now, to be honest with you, I tend to just Google how to install Portainer. And if we look at install Portainer CE with Docker on Linux, and that is essentially what we're doing because we're already running Arch Linux. Now, feel free, obviously, to read the introduction. But if we scroll down, we can see deployment. And here it says we need to create a volume. So Docker volume create Portainer. And that is exactly the same as what we just did for Uptime Kuma. But in this case, it's going to be called Portainer Data. So I'm going to copy this, paste it in my Arch Linux install. And then underneath, here is how you get Portainer up and running. So it's going to be Docker run dash D. 
and then the port is going to be 8000 and the port's going to be 9443. So 8000 is going to be HTTP and 9443 is going to be HTTPS. Then the name is going to be Portainer. As always, restart always. And then we have a few variables for Docker as well as the volume. So again, we have Portainer data here and then where the data is going to get stored. I'm just going to go ahead and copy this and paste it in here. And here we can see it's going to run the LTS version. So the long-term sustainability stability, I don't know what the LTS stands for, but long-term something. I'm going to hit enter. Now I've already got Portainer up and running. So if I show you that, we can see Portainer is already up and running on port 9443. So I now need to do the exact same thing that I did for Uptime Kuma, but the only thing I'm going to change is nine, the port is 9443. And look at this, we are in Portainer. So if you can get to this bit, that means you have deployed Portainer correctly. It will ask you to create a password. So make sure you set a super secure password and the password has to be 12 characters long. You can then change it in the settings, but it, for the admin account, you have to create a 12 digit password. And there we go. Here we are in Portainer. And you will be presented with something like this once you've set up your account. And you might be thinking, hold on, what do I do here? You have to click on Live Connect on the right hand side. And then we can see all our containers that are currently up and running. So we can see Portainers up and running. So it kind of shows itself. We can also see Uptime Kuma up and running as well as Wizardly underscore gang ganguly and essentially all this is this is the welcome to docker container if you ran that and this is how easy it is to manage them i can literally click on it and i can click stop so it will stop the container i can then select it and i can remove it and this is how easy it is to manage docker containers in portainer i literally select both of them for example the uptime kuma ones here and i click remove and i also remove persistent volumes and there we go we've got nothing up and running don't have to remember any commands, don't have to type anything in the terminal. This is how easy it is. Now to get a Docker container up and running, I like to use the Docker Compose files. And again, don't worry too much about that. I just wanna show you what the difference is. And essentially a Docker Compose file is just a slightly restructured file that you can paste into Portainer. So before we ran the whole Docker command, whereas now if you click on stacks, click on add stack, and here I'm gonna call it Uptime Kuma. And here you have something called a web editor. And you need to find what is called a docker compose or a compose.yaml file and it will look like this very very similar to what the docker command looks like but it's just in a much more to me anyway structured way so if i now copy this thing here paste it in my portainer we are pretty much ready to go so if we take a look it says services and this is how you always have to start docker compose files now docker compose files can be a whole separate video on their own and what i don't want to do is i don't want to make the video too long and kind of go too much off track i want to just show you how you can get docker images up and running and as i said you need something called the docker compose file you can most often find this by typing say the container name uptime kuma docker compose and here it will give you most of the time the file. So if I click on the GitHub image here, there is a compose.yaml file, and this is essentially where I've got it from. And you can type in whatever Docker container you're after, plus Docker Compose, and that should give you the result. And again, this will vary from container to container. But if we go back to Portainer, we can see it says services, and then it's called Uptime Kuma. Then we get the image. So essentially, this is what gets downloaded. And then on the volumes, it just puts it into the root. And then on the Docker side, it puts it into app slash data. And then we have the ports. Now here, you can, for example, change the ports to 3003. And I like to make sure that both ports match the internal and the external port. And then again, restart unless stopped. Now, further down, you could potentially add environment variables where if you need to load API keys or anything like that. But for now, don't worry about this. I would just highly encourage you to experiment around with something very simple such as Uptime Kuma and make sure that you can actually get it up and running and then kind of build on it. But if I now click deploy stack and then if we go back to containers on the left hand side, it says it is starting up. And there we go, that's the container up and running. We can see it's healthy and it's on port 3003. And you're gonna access it just the same way as before by going to the IP address. And that's basically it when it comes to Docker containers. Now, as I said, next week, we're gonna get a little bit more in depth because some of you might wanna expose some services. So I wanna show you something such as Open Web UI because that will allow you to use your own kind of API key for AI. But again, we're gonna cross that and I'm gonna show you how you can set your own domain and how you can access it safely and securely without having to do any port forwarding or anything like that. Now stay tuned for next week where we'll go over VPNs, we'll set up our own Tailscale VPN completely for free. 
And also we're going to show you how to use Cloudflare and how you can create tunnels and how you can expose all your Docker containers to the internet. So don't forget to like and follow if you've enjoyed this type of content. Also, let me know what other videos you want me to make because I want to make a full dedicated home lab series. But other than that, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.